A couple of weeks ago I uploaded a best gaming monitor under $200 video, check that one out up here. But today I'm taking care of you super budget gamers because this here is what I think is hands down the best gaming monitor under $100. This thing is seriously dope as fuck. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be reviewing the Acer SB220Q, which is only $90 on Amazon right now, and it's what I think is the best gaming monitor under $100. And if you're new here and you want to see more gaming monitor or PC hardware videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly pay some bills. Today's video is brought to you by Pulseway, which is a really neat remote monitoring and management software that I've actually deployed across my entire network down here in my studio. Pulseway is an all-in-one network management platform that allows you to remotely monitor and even control all of your devices that you installed the lightweight client on, which by the way, pretty much every operating system is supported. I personally really like the phone application because it allows me to quickly see what's going on with all of my devices, such as their temperatures, what processes are running, and I can even run scripts and perform Windows updates no matter where I'm at in the world. For us PC gamers, this is perfect because it allows us to start up those lengthy Windows updates while we're away so we know our gaming rigs are 100% good to go when we get home. There's also pages and pages of notification settings to configure so you can get all sorts of alerts from your devices. Head on down to the first link in the description to score yourself a free version account which supports up to two devices or use discount code ZTT to save two months off your next subscription. All right, so let's just quickly jump into the spec sheet before we talk about my actual experience with this monitor because I think you'll quickly see how much bang for the buck you're actually getting. For $90, this is a 21.5 inch 10 1080p 75Hz IPS free sync display and it's rocking a modest response time of 4 milliseconds. Right off the bat that's already a ton of value on paper but hold up there's more. For us gamers, in addition to the FreeSync technology and it's slightly faster than standard 60 hertz refresh rate, there's also a couple of other features worth mentioning. From the on-screen display, which by the way has all the features that I personally wanted and it's pretty easy to navigate, you'll find the aim assist icon with three different options and this is perfect for you first person shooter, no scoping, no lifers that I want absolutely nothing to do with. Secondly, there's a frame rate counter that you can turn on in the top right hand corner. I'll personally stick to MSI Afterburner, but it's a nice feature nonetheless. As as far as color goes, I was actually super impressed and honestly pretty blown away and just surprised that the standard preset that this came with right out of the box looked pretty crispy and just beautiful. There are also a ton of other already configured presets to choose from and of course a custom user RGB mode, but honestly the only tweak that I made was to switch the standard from warm temperature to normal temperature and I personally thought it looked awesome from there. With the important performance stuff out of the way, it's now time to move to the physical tour and here's where you can tell that it's just a $90 monitor. First, the stand that this thing comes with only allows for a 15 degree tilt and no other adjustments. That's to be expected with these super budget monitors, by the way, but there's also no VESA compatibility, which is kind of a bummer. On the back, there's only a power HDMI and VGA port, so that's definitely something to be aware of if you've been rocking a display port for the last three to four years like everybody else. The power brick that this monitor requires isn't that big and not that big of a deal, but one thing that I'm most upset with is the absence of an integrated speaker. Now don't get me wrong, most monitor speakers aren't that good and you're honestly not losing that much in terms of the feature list, but it would have been nice if they would have put at least crappy sounded speakers on there because they do come in handy sometimes when you're in a pinch. For me personally, I'm always moving around monitors from setup to setup down here in the studio and I don't always have the time to set up speakers or headsets at every station. Once again, not a huge deal, but just something to be aware of. One final thing to talk about during the physical tour, and honestly I saved the best for last, is just how clean and modern this thing looks. If you take a scroll through Amazon and look for $90 monitors, you're gonna find those super 
old ones with the super thick bezels around the side, and I just love how clean this thing looks. With all that out of the way though, I do want to quickly mention my experience with gaming on this monitor before wrapping up this video. As far as the 75Hz goes, which I'm assuming a lot of you are wondering about, I could honestly barely see a difference. I think I could when really concentrating, but either way, it is nice to have over a 60Hz panel. Another thing that's awesome to have is FreeSync, obviously. Chances are, if you're a gamer that's interested in this priced monitor, then you're more of a budget gamer and you can't afford all the latest high-end hardware, so you would actually really take advantage of this because it would prevent screen tearing and it would just give you a smoother playing experience. Finally, the last thing I want to mention is the size and if you're used to a bigger 27 inch monitor like I am, then I would highly recommend trying out a 21.5 inch monitor before buying one if you can. When I pulled this monitor out of the box, it felt ridiculously tiny and I wasn't a fan of how it looked on my desk at first either. Obviously, this won't apply to you if you're already used to something like a 23 inch monitor, but a lot of gamers actually prefer these smaller monitors because it's less screen real estate to look at and you can scan and see everything quickly and you'll get used to it rather quickly. It's just something to be aware of as well. Overall, after a ton of research on Amazon, this is the best monitor that I could find for under $100 and my hands-on experience with it definitely did not disappoint. I think it'll be pretty tough to beat this monitor in terms of price to performance, but be sure to let me know down in the comment section if there's another monitor you want to see me review next. Well, that wraps up my review of the Acer SB220Q $90 gaming monitor. As always, drop a comment down below about what you thought of this monitor or if you're actually going to pick one up. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, we're actually doing a full gaming setup tour. You don't want to miss that video.